Hi there, welcome to Art and Soul Insider. My name is Barbara Lynn Burns. I am so happy you're here. Uh, welcome to anyone who's new. If you're new, this channel is an art and wellness sort of channel in the fact that, uh, well, we get a little bit of everything. So what's really wonderful is that I have everything time stamped. So you know exactly what you're looking for and you can go straight to it. So example, if you want the guided meditation and only want to watch the guided meditation, well, you can find the gu guided meditation in under my descriptions and the time that that starts and you can forward to that time. Or say you wanna do the art project, well, same thing, just go straight to the art project. Or if you wanna learn about the featured art supply, well, you can go there too. Or one other way is watch the whole thing. So what I do is I start with a featured supply each week, and then I do um, a guided meditation. So something to really center ourselves and just feel really good starting into the project and the art project is basically anyone can do it and uh, it's fun but also relaxing because I believe art heals um, and art what I also believe is more art less stress so studies have shown that people that do art actually have just quieter and calmer moments <laughs> well when their artwork's going well but it has art has that way of working and it's really wonderful and then to end it off after the project I pick an oracle card and we leave with a message so if that interests you hang on tight we're going to start a really fun and uh, well kind of unique project so See you soon. Hi there. Welcome to our featured pro um, feature product. <laughs> I can get that out. And it is the Neo Color 2 Water Soluble Wax Pastels. They call them pastels. They're basically crayons. So, <laughs> but they're water soluble and they are amazing. Now look at this. This is what really excites me when I open this up. Is look at the colors. Oh, doesn't it make your heart, oh, pitter-patter, oh my goodness. I, when I opened this, I was, oh, happy. Like, look at these colors. They're just beautiful. So, one suggestion that they have for the care of these is to keep them out, keep them away from sun and heat. That makes sense because they are very much like crayons, but they're softer and they're, they will melt. Um, they'll still work, but you won't have these the lovely shape that you have. So um, let's, let's get playing. Uh, I'm gonna get a sheet open here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna be actually using these crayons for uh, the art project today. So just hang on tight and uh, you'll be able to see me the, these uh, in progress. <laughs> so here they are, very much like crayons. They feel crayon-y. They, they've got kind of a waxy feel to them, okay? So there's the color. You take your brush, put it in some water, okay? And then Look at that. Look at that intensity of that color. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, really makes my heart sing. So um, you can even blend them. Okay, so. That. Okay, so I kind of blend them like that. Here's those two, okay? And then I go the opposite way to bring some of that color in. 
Sometimes I go too much like that and I absolutely destroy it. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out because mistakes happen, right? And I think sometimes when we make mistakes, we're awfully hard on ourselves. But you learn. It worked with the other, with the lighter colors, but I guess it didn't work for this. So this one. So each one's kind of different. So there we go. I'm just going to bring it back a little bit there like that. There. Isn't that wonderful? Like so easy. So much fun. I mean, you could use these just as line work, you know, right? But if you want to, you can also just take a lovely wet brush and you've got magic. So this is the Neo Color 2, okay? There you go. They're just wonderful. Okay, here we are at the guided meditation. Um, this specific guided meditation, I really enjoy it. I um, It just kind of really calms everything about me. And uh, in the fact that, you know, just the, where my mind goes when I, when I'm reading these, uh, these words, uh, there's a sense of peacefulness that comes. And so I hope you find that today or you find encouragement or it um, being even uplifting for you. So um, I have this in front of you because some people don't like to close their eyes. I personally recommend you close your eyes because then what happens is there's no distractions. You're just focusing on the words that you're hearing and imagining. Um, so, but I have this here in case you don't want to close your eyes. This was one of the projects that we did. So have a look for that. Um, I'll put it up on the um, uh, notice there. So on the top that you can just click on it if you're interested. So um, again, just relax. Have Sit comfortably. Take a deep breath. And gently close your eyes. Imagine these scenes while you continue to breathe in and out slowly and calmly. See yourself relaxing by a beautiful, calm lake. The breeze softly blows over the lake and you watch the thousands of tiny ripples it creates on the surface of the lake. Your surroundings here are so calm and pleasant that it brings a feeling of complete peace. This calm feeling washes over your entire body and mind. You breathe in deeply and allow the peacefulness to fill you. You notice the birds singing in the trees, softly chirping and singing their songs of their simple happiness. Take the time now to release any worries, any disturbing thoughts, any sadness you may be feeling. Let those feelings float up 
out and away, floating far away. Whatever has happened today that has bothered you, it is time to let that go. Know that you are really in control of your mind and your body. You can choose to allow these bothersome emotions to leave. In doing so, you will free up space in your heart and mind for positive things to come. Life is all about creating what you want and choosing good thoughts that make you feel good. When you focus on the positive, you get more positive experiences in your life. Releasing any negative thoughts serves like an umbrella on a rainy day. Sure, the rain is there, but it doesn't have to affect you. In your mind's eye, picture yourself now in a stormy, rainy situation. As you open up your umbrella of positivity, you see how you are really protected from all that is going on outside. You're safe. You don't have to be a part of any rainy difficulties. It truly is your choice how you react to whatever comes your way. Know that you have all the tools you need within. Just choose to use them. You can see your life from a happy perspective. Worry, disturbing thoughts, or sadness are choices of thoughts you think and you can simply set them free and let them ripple away across the surface of the lake. You can release all the things that have been stressful to you and make peace with yourself. Make peace now with the amazing person that you truly are inside. As you look out over this serene lake, nurture yourself with your loving thoughts. Release any negative images or ideas about yourself. You have a choice in what you believe. Your mind is your greatest asset and your best tool. Now take a deep breath in. Allow good feelings 
to fill up your heart and your mind. Peacefulness and calm are all around you. Open your eyes when you're ready and stretch fully. Oh, that was a, such a good one. I, you know, I love the idea of an umbrella, visually putting up that umbrella and then any kind of thing that's bothering us, that's raining down on us as such, we've, we're protected with, you know, they called it the umbrella of positivity. Now, it doesn't mean that you ignore what you're feeling. If you're feeling sad, it's really good for you to express that sadness and to get it out of your system because your body holds all these emotions and all these past incidences and traumas it holds it in. And so what guided meditation does is actually helps you to realize that, as, the, as it, this one said, you have a choice. You have a choice of just bringing it up and putting it out. Okay? Don't hold it within yourself. You know, it said... You can see your life from a happy perspective. Worry, disturbing thoughts, or sadness are choices of thoughts you think. And you can simply set them free and let them ripple away across the surface of the lake. So that's what you can do when you're in a situation where, say you're really sad. Imagine taking that sun sadness and putting it on that lake and let it ripple away from you. Just ripple away. You know, it, it really helps me to almost see my emotions, well, not my emotions, my, my thoughts, as outside of my, my feelingness. The other day I went through, had a kind of, well, it was a tough day. And so I was able to just, take the emotions I was feeling and kind of put them out because there wasn't anything I could do and worry wasn't going to help anything. So I simply told myself, I cannot control this situation. What will happen is what will happen. And I just need to live and accept this. Okay? So, you know, it's a matter of sometimes self-talk. And it it's important that our self-talk is positive towards ourselves. Oh, we, we so often are, are mean to ourselves. You know, we need to be soft and gentle to ourselves. You know, you can release all the things that have been stressful to you. And you can make peace with yourself. It's not going to come overnight. It's not going to come with one guided meditation, but by continual attention on yourself and where you're at. Healing does come. I know that. I've gone through some significant traumas in my life, and I know that things do get better and that you just need to release all the things that are stressful. And just do what you can, and what you can't, just give your mind some peace and just let it go out and ripple away on the water. Or have your umbrella of positivity up, you know? So it's very interesting guided meditation. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some thoughts to think about. But yeah, you're worth it. And you're a kind and good person. So remember the goodness about you. Okay, here we are at the project. So we're going to be using the Neocolor Water Solubles. Okay, I've got my 
let's just start at the beginning. I've got my mixed media. This helps help to go the right way for you, huh? Uh, it's Strathmore mixed media. It says 40 sheets. It is 117 pound paper. There are ones mixed media that are 90 pound. I like a heavier type of paper. So, open it up. Get it in the right position so you can kind of see everything, <laughs> which is important. Okay, so I've got the sheet open. I'm going to be using the Neo Color Water Soluble. Oh, Neo Color 2. It's important to know because there is a one. I've got a brush. I've got a couple of brushes, actually. Actually, I've got my water. I have my blow dryer. Okay. And I have a pen, I think. What will I use? I've got the, my, my uh, Micron ones, so they're awfully good to use. So I've got those. I'll use those today. Try and close my drawer here. So I also have a ruler to measure because I'm going to make sections on this piece of paper. And I've got water soluble, <laughs> uh, not water soluble, um, water resistant tape, which it seals when the water hits. And this is what's called painter's tape. I highly recommend it over regular masking tape. But if masking tape is all you have today, use that. And if you don't have the Neo Color to water soluble pastels, don't worry about them. Use your watercolors. Use your acrylics. Use your temper paint. Whatever you have, use it. Okay? So, yeah. Just that everyone can participate, right? So, what I did is I marked this up. So, I created a halfway point. Okay? Um, again, this is uh, 9 by 12. So, this is 9. So, this is four and a half section. Where's my pencil? I'm going to draw a light pencil line here just so that I'm going to put tape over top so I should see the tape, I mean the line, and I've divided this into um, four sections as well. Okay, because this is 12 inches, I'm actually making it... Uh, three inches long or three inches width okay good old match the ticks <laughs> okay and for those that have watched me before you know I love white crisp lines that's why we're going to use the tape it seems to frame everything wonderfully so i love that so i'm just going to use tape okay okay Press it down. I'm going to go from the perforated section, okay? I'm going to move it closer to me so I can actually see it better. Sorry about that. We'll put it right back where it belongs very soon. Well, it's good enough. Close. Okay, so there we go. Now we go this way. So I'm going to use just a half. Because I'm going to do this halfway, right? There we go.
so the lines are dark enough that I can see through the tape and I'm able to get my line work. And they're light enough that I'll be able to erase them, right? So. Yeah, I love the timestamps that um, you can get with uh, YouTube. And it's in my descriptions, and you can just find them. Find what you're looking for. Come, come on. I can't find the line there. There we are. There we go. And on this side, I'm just going to go half because, again, this is just half of a one. If you know what I mean. Perfect. This line across. I'm going to bring this closer to me again so I can see it. Oh, that line is light. There we go. Little tiny areas. So, here we go. I can do each one in, um, in different colors, okay? I could do, do them all the same color. I could do a gradation. What do I want to do? Hmm? What do I want? So... I don't know. I haven't figured it out. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm figuring this out just as, as I'm doing it, just like you're seeing it. So what am I wanting to do? I wanted to have a sense of unity. So using too many colors might be a little distracting. Yet what I'm drawing on top will give a sense of unity in some ways. Um, I could do it all warm colors, okay? I could do it all cool colors, like that. Um, yeah. I don't have enough pastels here, okay, but to do them, because I need, I need eight in total, don't I? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to do them solid. Just going to do them solid. Because I was going to do a gradation, but I don't have enough to do a gradation. Okay, taking a big brush. I love these because... They are a smooth, very smooth. You don't see the edges on it. Oh, do I want to do a little stuff like that? I kind of like it. I'm just going to leave some marks kind of larger. Okay. So I'm just, I'm... In order to help me, I know I can see it, but visually I'm just going to take one out like this to know that I've used it, right? Okay. I'm going to put the other, I'm going to do them like this. There's going to be a progression going. 
So that'll give it a sense of unity as well. These are just so easy to work with and they're so much fun. You know, so much fun. So clean my brush well, because you don't want it altered by another color. And I'm going to color in the inside and then go out because I want to get those edges, right? Because wherever it's white, like right there, we don't want that. This is called, this color is called orange. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm, I'm, oops, my fingers are all with the color there. There we go. I put my hand down here. That's funny. I thought it was going to be some azo orange or something like that. They do have some colors that are like cobalt, cobalt blue and stuff. Um, but that one was just orange. <laughs> So this, this is a stronger orange. This is called, where are we? Where are we? Flame red. Okay. Flame red. I got a hair on there. Take that hair off. This is a very orangey red. But look how intense the colors are when I am just doing this, you know, just plain, just shading, not even getting it really dark, and yet I get a solid color. It's just wonderful. It's so easy to use, as I mentioned before. Just really, just so much fun. I wish I had enough colors to do a gradation in each one. That would look really cool. But, oh well. Um, I guess I need the larger set. <laughs> this one is called, let me try and find the color, Vermilion. Yes. So that's a common uh, color. Okay. So these can be individually cut up after I'm done. Or they could be um, just left as they are and, and displayed as a whole, you know. Okay, so the next color is... Mm-mm. Scarlet. Scarlet. So however you wish to display this, again, you know, you, there are choices. Or you could do a set of four like that, right? Um, you can do individual ones, little ones. You could do them as a set of four, right? Um or you, uh, even four this way, right? I mean, lots of options. Next color is, do, 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 where are we? Oh, Carmine. Mm -hmm. 
carmine is a very popular uh, red that is used in women's lipsticks to get that really red color. And I, um, how they get it is it's actually through a bug. So carmine is a, is a non-vegan <laughs> color. And the last warm one is purple. Oh, so it's not real. Purple's kind of a cool color. But this has a bit of red in it, so I'm going to include it in the warms. So now I'm going to take a blow dryer and dry this up. Now we're completely done with the markers, okay? Take my brush out of the water. Please never leave your brush in the water like this, okay? You want to make sure that it's out Okay, because what happens is if the water, if the water, if the brush stays in there too long, it can actually ruin the attachment of the, where the brush, the, I think it's called the furrow. I could be mistaken. Um, I know a lot about art, but <laughs> that word escapes me. It's the connection where the, the bristles connect with the actual brush handle. Okay, so just... And, it, and what happens, too, is when it's in the water, it's kind of bent like that, okay? And so you're putting pressure on that beautiful tip, okay? You don't want that. Uh, you don't want misshapen br brushes, so. Okay, so now I've got my pens here. Um, I have a wide selection. I, this one's the brush one. This was an... O2, I think that's too tiny. One might be it. Hmm. Or maybe if I have another one that's higher. Oh, 0.5. I wish I had my other set, which I don't have here. I think it's upstairs. Yep, it's upstairs. Oh, no. Ah, it's here. It snuck at the back of the the drawer there. They say these type of pens should be actually stored flat, not like this, not upright. Um, and the reason why is because um, you want to keep the tip moist, okay? So that's, that's what you want with that one. That's nice. That's good. Yeah. I think. And so this one, what I'm using is a point eight. Okay, zero eight. You can use ones that are, um, like these are water soluble. They're archival um, ones. They're they're really good. But you can use any type of pen. I mean, even a ballpoint pen will work, right? Okay, so let's start. Now, you could do this in pencil first if you want, okay? Now, the key is if you're doing this in pencil, if you have to use your eraser, please you do it softly. And if you're also doing it in pencil, please draw softly, okay? because you don't want it Im imprinted in um, and you're not too sure about it, okay? So, 
I've got some got some stuff here that I'm going to use. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to draw a straight line. These are all variations of a tree. Okay. So now it comes down and we're going to loop it like this. Oh. Started working again. <laughs> I didn't even have to do anything with that. There you go. I didn't put that in the center, so this I made this side a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Sometimes trees have they're larger on one side. So I'm going to do different lines coming out. This is more of an abstraction of a tree, right? We're not going for any realism here. Okay, so, and then I'm going to do one coming down like that. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. Oops. Little bug. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Bug. Okay. So a little bit different, huh? So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to do line design inside certain sections. Not all of them. So you get a variation. It's going to be kind of a little different tree in the fact that it'll just show up in a different way. Um, It'll just have a greater impact because you have an area that's going to be technically more solid looking than just the line work. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of in the center, kind of. I'm going to try and make them the same size, so the same distance away, right? Okay, so that they fill the space as well. I'm just trying to do some so I get kind of an an idea of uh, the um, distance I need to make each one. See that? So now I'm going to fill it in with some more. Make sure they touch that middle bark because that's how they're growing. <laughs> there we go. So we have that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is add some visual interest by putting little dots, little periods at the end of them. Okay. 
just that you know this isn't coming from um, my imagination. I actually did a whole section of trees like that. <laughs> so I'm kind of picking and choosing which one I want to use. Um, I'm going to use, so there's, again, getting the height and getting them kind of starting in the center. Don't worry if this isn't perfectly centered. Don't worry if this is a little crooked, this line. We're just having fun, right? So just draw a straight line like that. And then what we're going to do is like that. So that's the top of the tree. Okay, so this one, I'm going to put little dots right on top of the line. There we go. I'm going to make this one a little thicker as well, just a little. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to do dots in between here. There we go. So now I've got a line coming out here. It's just going to be a plain line. I'm going to kind of make some bigger areas, make some smaller areas as well with this one not connecting them at all. There we go. So this one has space in it, so I'm gonna do dots right in the middle so that there's actual space around the dots. Again, I want space inside these dots. And I'm going to make this one a little bit thicker. There you go. Well, there's a tree. Okay, let's do... Um, It's a little different one here coming up. It's more square. So we're going to do kind of come in like that again. Same height, same everything. And we're going to make kind of a lopsidable kind of tree. <laughs> okay. So this one, we're just going to do lines that are across here. Okay, don't worry about, kind of have them a little wiggly and not straight. So now, right on the line, we're going to do some circles. Are you seeing kind of the sense of unity I'm working with here? I'm work, even though each one's different, right? Each one is, has its own thing, but I'm using a combination of line and circles to kind of unite the whole thing together. So I'm not putting the same number on, on them, okay? I'm kind of varying it, right?
It's going to be a really different one. Okay, but we're still using straight lines and circles. So this one, we're going to draw like that. Then inside, we're going to have a dot. And around the dot, we're going to actually have a colored in section. Okay, then I'm going to have a straight line coming out and a dot on each one and a circle around. Now I've got a bigger circle. Again, it doesn't have to be straight and perfect. Got a dot in the middle again. And I want one that's going to go kind of close. And another one that's going to go closer to this one. Okay. Another line. With a dot circle around the dot I'm going to make this line thicker all the way around this would be a really neat present to give to someone who is really into the outdoors or something like that you know what I mean so you get all these these creative type of um, circles and uh, lines that make these trees right there we go there's a funky tree there <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do here are kind of very different. They're a little, we're going to do three lines. Or was it four lines? Three lines. Yeah. And open spaces. So that's one, and that's two, three. And then we got one coming here. One and two. And we're going to do one here. There you go. There's the tree. Um, boom. This one's kind of a skinnier tree. Okay. Then we're going to go around this one. And do another one. Let's do a close one. Let's do one like that. And then a smaller one. There we go. So, this first one right here, we're going to put ball, little 
berries on it as such. Well, they could be lights. Who knows? Even when you're doing them, it's a good idea. You see, like I, I had this square and a square kind of one here. And then I'm going to do kind of a leaf and leaf one here. Um, just, I don't know. Sometimes, well, not sometimes. You always have to be aware of what you're putting next to something or how, how it's going to look, right? But at the same time, don't let it stop you from experimenting and playing. This is a very lighthearted, fun work of art. And that's what it is. We're just having fun making little trees with different shapes, right? So... So that, and then we're going to combine some line design in this one. So this is going to be really short little lines. I'm just using the side of my, my uh, pen to draw these lines here. There we go. Okay. And next one. There we go. Very thin. Okay. And we're just going to do some line work here. Make sure you go all the way to that point. I've been... Guilty of not doing it sometimes, right? So. I'm wondering if I should thicken the center. Mm, maybe. I'm going to take my number one. Okay. Mm. There we go. See, that's just a little, little bit bigger. Okay. I didn't choose to use the spindly ones because I thought there might be too much space. And that's one concern I'm thinking when I'm using this tape. So we'll actually find out when we untape it. there. I think it just gives it more um, strength in that space. So now let's take the tape off. Again, you can display these as a unit. So as the whole, whole thing together, or you could divide into four this way. Okay. Or divide into four this way and this way, right? Uh, another option you could do was also um, you could individually do them. So how you display them is up to you. on the side here. There's been no kind of seeping through the tape, which I love to see. Sometimes sometimes you're lucky, sometimes uh, it doesn't work out. <laughs> oh, look at that. I got it on the top. But that's actually in the perforated area. So, not too bad. So, what do you think? I think they're kind of cool. You know what? I might divide them into two. 
looks kind of cool together, though. They look really funky, don't they? Yeah. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. That was, To me, that was so fun and, again, very relaxing. And that's the key with doing these art projects. It's just to take you away from the everyday, and it stops your brain. And your brain just focuses on this. And this is a good place to be. So next, what we're going to do is have the lovely oracle reading with some beautiful cards. So here we are for the oracle reading. Um, we're going to use some very unique cards, okay? Very unique. They are uh, just very neat, you know? They're a different shape as well, okay? These messenger cards, that what they're called, messenger cards, are actually by Sandra Coons. I believe she's a Canadian. Um, and yeah, these are guidance from the animal spirits. So uh, in the back, it has something about Sandra. And again, this is your, your lovely cards, right? The uh, explanation about the cards. So these are the, this is the backing. Okay. And then the the various um, various images on them, all animal spirits. So I have to train my hands <laughs> to uh, shuffle these, right? So this reading is for someone that's watching right now, okay? It also can be for the collective, which means everyone. There's a message that everyone can receive right now and the things we need to be aware of. So it could, again, could be for an individual or could be for us all. I always think there's a message for all of us, um, no matter the reading, even if it is for someone else. There's always some beautiful treasure that I can get out of it. So, well, that's the card right there. Intuitively, I pick cards. So uh, some people do a fan and then pick one. Um, lately, I've been just pulling it out of the card. So this one that we have is number nine, the bean card. So we see this beautiful dragonfly. Looks like it's flying in between the r grasses and stuff like that. It actually looks like it has some gold in it. So it's beautiful. Number nine bean. This is actually the dragonfly, an uh, animal spirit. Though the water and sky are one in the same, as we are all one in the same, we can be and one with this world, but not feel as though we are of it. We are light beings of pure energy, here to physically experience the life force that is us. The more we are in the world, but not tied to the tide, to the density of the physical world, more we have the freedom to experience the possibilities of our human existence without boundaries. It is easy to forget that the world we live in is made of energy. Some days our stories feel so dense that it is difficult to remember that we are the creators of our reality. Call on the magic of the great illusionist the dragonfly, to assist you in detaching from the story, knowing that all is right and well, and returning to the state of connected being. Wow. So there it is again that it's, um, it said that we, um, that we are in control of our of our destiny and we're beings of light 
here to physically experience the life force that is us. That we're not tied to the world or the, the density of the physical world, but there's freedom to experience the possibilities of our human existence without boundaries. So it asks us to call on the magic of the great illusionist to assist you in detaching from the story, knowing that all is right and well and that we're returning to our connected being. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that it fed your soul and fed your spirit and calmed your mind. Um, I'm just so happy that you took the time for yourself to be here. And uh, I hope that you just feel like you have a little more energy to face the world. And uh, again, I'm proud of you for taking time for yourself because a lot of times we don't. And so it's so important. Um, so with that, if you liked uh, any part of the um, session we had today, whether it be the reading, the oracle reading, or the um, guided meditation, or the featured supply, or the actual project, please give us a like and a, subscri yep, and a subscribe. There we go. Um, because you doing that actually gets it noticed by other people. And I would love to have more people here experience just the the ability that art heals and that more art less stress right so um but with that i send you off with great love um peace and may there be joy in your life and please take care of yourself there is only one of you and you're very important to, to numerous people. You make a difference. So thank you for being here. Take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.